right, thanks everyone for coming out today. I'm going to start with a couple of opening remarks from Coach and take questions. Uh, yeah, just some thoughts from obviously the uh, Illinois game. Um, you know, as I said after uh, that game, I, I thought that uh, it was a good game for us from the standpoint of um, answering some of the questions we had going into the 21 season about would we be a team that, that would overcome adversity. Uh, we've shown in the first couple of games, I feel like we've played with a better discipline, but uh, still not where we need to be, obviously. But this was one of the first games where I thought uh, we had a chance to, to possibly uh, fold under adversity and was really pleased with the way the team responded. Um, you know, we preach not being school board watchers to play the next play and stay in the moment with each and every game, no matter the opponent, no matter the situation of the game. And then it really doesn't matter until the game is over. And I felt like our kids tried to do that against Illinois and uh, were very successful in being able to do it. So. Uh, coming out of that game, I feel very good about the direction of our culture in terms of being a team that will just play the game and let whatever happens uh, happen in terms of the school board and not let it uh, have any effect on us prior to the end of the game. I felt like we played for four quarters, and it was a tough game like we expected. Uh, road wins in the Big Ten are always tough. Uh, credit to Brett and his staff uh, at Illinois that they had their guys ready to play. And I was, we're very fortunate as a team to get out of there with a win. Um, as far as Kent State, uh, this week's opponent, again, you know, look at a team that, you know, as I told our team yesterday, I mean, this is a team that's already played two top 10 football teams and they didn't blink. And so I can tell you, they won't come into the shell um, intimidated because they've played, like I said, on the road against two top 10 teams, uh, Texas A&M, I want to say the score was like, uh, 10 to 3 at the half, and then at Iowa, which is a tough place to play as well, it's 13 6 in the third quarter. So, um, a, a, a veteran team, you know, you look, I think, you know, a lot of the schools there in the MAC conference have benefited from that COVID year because they had a lot of returning players that are graduates. So, they've got a veteran group. Uh, when you look at what they do on defense, I think they've got to be one of the top teams in the country in terms of creating turnovers which last week uh, kind of showed back up for us on the offensive side of the ball. Um, those guys play really aggressively on the defensive side of the ball. They've got three players in their interior seven, that front seven or zero, 15, that are really, really good players. Um, you know, on offense, their quarterback is the guy that makes them go. Crum is a, a savvy veteran quarterback that knows that system really, really well. You know, Coach Lewis, uh, Sean, and his staff, they obviously have the Syracuse background. He was the offensive coordinator there uh, when we played him in 2019. And uh, their offensive system with the vertical read passing game, the tempo stuff has been something that has created a lot of problems for teams, uh, you know, over the years. And their quarterback is very, very good at running that system. They play three running backs that are all, you know, a couple of guys from this area that we know a little bit about uh, that are all really good players. Um, you know, they've got a transfer, in, uh, Nikeem Johnson, number 82, that played at Syracuse, was a teammate of Dante Demas is here. He's a slot receiver that will be a, a big threat for us because the guy is fast, fast, like uh, can, can really, really run. And so he'll pose a great challenge for us. But all in all, again, this is gonna be a good challenge for us. Uh, being back here at the Shell, um, able to Again, maybe build on some things that, that you know, and get some things corrected. You know, when you're able to make corrections and coach your players hard after a tough road win like we had this weekend, uh, you know, my expectation is that our players will bounce back and try to get back to playing at least offensively with the type of uh, what the, the type of way we need to play in terms of protecting the football and making plays on third down, and sustained drives, and then obviously defensively, if there was one negative with the way we played on uh, Friday a week ago was we didn't get off the field on third down, which I think resulted in them getting 27 extra plays. So we'll work really hard to improve the third down stuff and the mistakes. We'll work hard to getting back to taking care of the football on offense this week and uh, looking forward to uh, Kent State coming into the shell. Uh, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Ryan, on the right. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, I know last year was you know, the team only played five games, but in those five games, you only the teams only get I believe two interceptions on defense, and now this year it's four interceptions. What do you think maybe what is the reason for the uptick in takeaways? 
You know, anytime you're able to get create turnovers the way we have on defense thus far, uh, you got to give credit to the players. Uh, they're making the plays that are there available to make. Uh, I think Coach Stu and the defensive staff has done a great job from last year to this year because we made a point of emphasis with the turnover differential from last season. Uh, was a re really big reason for how you know things ended up for us to to make that a, a, a point of point of something we need to be improving on. And we see it. Um, the guys are making the plays in the passing game with the interceptions. We forced some fumbles. We're very fortunate to maybe be ahead in that turnover margin as opposed to what we was. But I think it's something that we've really tried to uh, make a point of emphasis on the defensive side of the ball. <clears throat> maybe this sounds really simple, but I'm curious with the depth that receiver, how, how do you keep all the guys happy just from a personal standpoint when you have guys who could maybe be the top guy somewhere else in our third, fourth here? Yeah, I think it's their job to keep us happy, Emily. Um, you know, and they do that by the way they practice, the way they block on the perimeter, uh, the way they're unselfish. You know, I'm not um, new. This isn't my first rodeo with having a lot of talented receivers in one room. Um, one of the things I've always tried to do, and I know it's something that Dan has uh, kind of adapted as well, is as long as those guys get their targets and their touches, which means they, they get opportunities, um, they usually are, are, are pretty good. And, and this room has been really unselfish, as has most of the rooms. You know, when you build that camaraderie in there, they really don't care if it's them or their brother that's getting the touches. But I think if you look at the way the ball was spread around on Friday, you know, Jay Sean had four or five catches. Daryl Jones had four or five. Rock had four or five. Dante had five to seven. The tight ends are all involved. So I just think um, the diversity in which we try to distribute the ball and how Dan calls the plays to get your playmakers the ball or get them their touches makes it, uh, makes it a little easier for those guys because they do work hard. They're all very unselfish. You know, you see guys like Brian Cobbs, who, like I said, is like a, 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 he is a starter for us and maybe not getting the, the touches or making the contribution that he would like, but I, I see him still going out there doing all the little things right, and when he gets his opportunities, he's prepared for them. So very unselfish group, and I know they all pull for each other. Hey there, Coach. Um, looking through this roster, you see guys like Dante, Rakim, Nick Cross. There's a lot of guys that are making impacts that are from right here in the DMV. I know you heavily recruit out of this area. What is it about this area that produces such good talent? You mentioned some of the guys even on Kent State. I think the big thing is that uh, the coaching in this area is really, you know, when I was growing up, this was more known for its basketball, uh, more known as a basketball area. One of the benefits of being a basketball area is obviously the athleticism but what I've seen since you know I've been recruiting this area since 1992 uh, when I first got into coaching is just the level of coaching in the high school ranks the youth football uh, has really really improved and now you're starting to see you know players at a younger age being a, a little more uh, further along in their ability whereas you used to get a really raw player who had skill and size but maybe hadn't been coached as much or as well because you know a lot of times these guys play multiple sports and they don't have a chance to to improve exponentially like you would when you focus on it so i have to give credit obviously when you look across the country and you look in this area we usually have three or four high school teams that are ranked in the top 25 in the country so to me that speaks volumes to the level of football that uh, the players we have in this area within a 45 hour drive of campus I think the coaching here has just continued to get better and better as you know we always say as part of being the flagship university it's our job to provide the resources to these high schools and youth programs which we have an open door policy they come visit us they come watch practice they're all trying to improve their craft to be better coaches which in turn i think presents us with the opportunity to recruit better players Brian, right. all right coach um going back to the defense uh just I was going to get your overall thoughts on how the defense has reformed through these first three games. Uh, have they uh, lived up to your standards, or are they exceeding your expectation you have from them? Well, stage? I think they're living up to our standard. You know, not necessarily mine. You know, our standards that we set are team, are team oriented, and you know, our defense is living up to our standard. Um, obviously, coming into the year, there were some things that we made a point of emphasis: stopping the run, creating turnovers, limiting big plays, and. You know, through three games, I've been really pleased with it. Um, is it perfect? No. I mean, like I said, we've got to do a better job playing on third down. 
I thought the missed tackles showed up in the Illinois game where, you know, we had a lot of missed tackles in the perimeter, um, which are those are things that, as I talked to our team about, individually we can work on getting corrected. But I do think uh, with some of the focus we put on stopping the run, creating turnovers, limiting big plays, I've been pleased with that, and, and I feel like our players have bought into it. Coach, you mentioned how Kent State had a few guys from this area. One that sticks out is Marquez Cooper, who leads their rush right now. How much of a challenge does he present for you as you highlighted you wanted to stop the run, knowing that he'll be a big part of their game plan on this Thursday, Saturday? Yeah, I think the big thing with him is obviously the offensive line is what makes him go. And they've got a bunch of clones across the front five of their old line. They do a really good job. They play hard. Uh, you know, he's one of those little backs that kind of gets hidden behind those big old linemen and he has the short area quickness that presents trouble. Um, I think the big thing for us as we've done the first few games, it's important to say, hey, you're not going to beat us running the football by how we either load the box up or we make adjustments and bring safeties down to add the extra defender. And then it puts a little pressure on our secondary, which has really uh, showed up and responded the right way in terms of how we're covering on the back end. So um, definitely a good player for them. Um, has the ability to make plays, really explosive runner that, like I said, if he sees a little crease, he's able to accelerate through there. So we got to do a good job of a team defense against him. Hey, Coach, I know the uh, special teams is kind of an area of emphasis heading into the season, and I know the first few weeks, especially on kicks and punt returns, have been a little bit up and down. So what are you guys going to you know, try to do to clean that up and, and make sure that there's no more muffs going forward? You know, I, I thought of the last couple of weeks our special teams have played pretty well. I mean, we had a big return two weeks ago. Obviously, there have there been mistakes? Yeah, there are mistakes just like we have on offense and defense. You know, for Tarheeb to feel the punt running back inside the 10, you know, that's a game experience for him. He's only returned punts for three games and games for So it's a learning curve there. Um, it's something that once he does it, he'll learn. It's not like we haven't taught him. You don't run back, but again, they had a great special teams kicker and punter there at Illinois. Uh, he got kind of lost where he was on the field when he went back to fielding, and uh, you know we'll, we'll live and learn with those things. But I think the element that he and Jay Sean present as returners, uh, having Rock him and Dante Demas back there, we haven't had a chance to return a kick last week because of their specialists and how talented they were. But you know our kickoff cover unit after the first game has really improved and done a great job there. Uh, our punt team, is, we won the, the field position battle with punt team last week. So um, maybe not as far back as maybe you've presented it to me in your question, but uh, you know, we're playing a lot of young players on special teams, and I think we'll continue to get better with each game. Coach, uh, game one and game three, West Virginia and Illinois, seemed like at the end of the game you were physically superior those last few minutes, which helped your victory. Uh, and yet you had a targeting call, a near targeting call, uh, some really aggressive hits. How do you how do you balance that? You want aggressiveness. Well, we're going to let the refs make those calls. Um, I promise you that our players don't aim when they go to tackle to target. Obviously, we've made coaching points on you know the, the rule emphasis of blocking back toward the ball and. You know, we had one of those on the, uh, the interception return where the defender becomes an offensive player and the days of crack back blocking guys, you can't do it anymore and we'll continue to emphasize that. But, you know, Gators play was, I mean, my grandma would have been able to call targeting on it. It was, you know, you don't launch yourself from the player. So, I, you know, that's one that, you know, just got to be a smarter, make smarter plays. And so we'll continue to coach through those type of things. But with Jordan Mosley's, you know, it was almost, but he didn't. He lived with the shoulder. He was hitting below the shoulders of the defender. The refs got it right. So, I mean, I'm not going to try to take the teeth out of our defense. We'll make the referees call it. We'll play aggressive. We'll play clean. And sometimes those calls just happen the way, you know, the runners nowadays can present themselves and, you know, the target changes. So uh, what I'm not going to do is have us uh, play tentative and not aggressive. So we'll let the refs make those calls. and make adjustments if they become targeting and put the next guy in there. Coach Sam Okuwano, he has four sacks, the three Good games. job with the name, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was practicing it before. <laughs> so, yeah, he also had two sacks at Illinois. Can you just uh, speak to him as a player and what he means to his defense as a whole? Yeah, I think the big thing with Sam O uh, is, again, I said this a few weeks ago, 
you know, guys like him and Fleet Davis have really benefited from the COVID year. Uh, a guy that didn't play football until like his junior year of high school, was a soccer player, moved over to the country late, so he's not like he grew up as a football player. And I just think being able to add this extra year to, to him has really helped and benefited our team because he's as, as explosive as any player in the country. I mean, he's a guy that has a 600 pound type squat. He's a 500 bench guy. Like he's a freak in the weight room. And as he's gained football experience and playing and taking the techniques that Brian Williams teaches him, he continues to get better and better. And I think he's putting himself in a position where he'll be a guy because of what he's doing, he's creating some value for himself that may afford him an opportunity to play at the next level. And it's great to see that uh, for a guy like Sam Moe because, again, you know, young to the game of football, but just keeps getting better and better and has been a tremendous leader for us uh, coming back for that extra year. Ryan and Jake. Man, you get three questions. You look at all that. Coach, uh, Nick Cross had a solid game against Illinois. Just what are your thoughts on that on that performance and what he's done in his growth uh, in year three? Yeah, I've been pleased with Nick's growth. Uh, growth. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that came in, uh, really heralded, um, coming and playing right down the road at DeMatha. Uh, he's been pretty much a starter since the time he got on campus. Uh, I think, like with all young players, I mean, he's a young junior. I mean, when you look at it, he played five games last year played in 12, 12 his first year. He's still 17 games in and in three thus far. I think he'll be a guy that just continues to get better. Um, he has a tremendous skill set with his range and size. And I think the thing that's really kind of showed up this year for us is just how physical he is when he makes contact. Uh, he's running through people. He's doing a great job of being a physical presence in the deep third of the field for us. And now he's shown that he can make the play in the air. When the ball's in the air, he's been able to go get a couple picks. So I'm really pleased with his progress, where he is, and even more pleased that he started to develop the leadership that you want to see out of a third-year guy that's played a lot of football around. Hey, Coach, after another strong performance from Talia and getting the chance to look over that with uh, film, where are you just hoping, you, where do you and Coach Gino's hope that he goes from here? I hope he keeps getting better and better um, from here. Um, you know, that's the goal, is to try to present yourself to get better every each and every day. We always talk about chasing being 1% better every day, and then it becomes a, uh, something special. But I've been pleased with Lee. I thought, you know, early in that game, I thought he, you know, obviously playing on the road for the first time this year, and it was a great environment up there in Champaign that uh, it took him a little while to get settled down. But once he kind of settled down, and got an idea of what they were trying to do to affect him because they did try to change the picture up on him. And he was able to settle down and, and get to being disciplined with his eyes and where the ball needed to go. And, you know, I thought, you know, the last four drives, you know, we had the fumble on the, in the red area and then the one play fumble with Penny Boone. But, you know, I thought the whole second half, there wasn't a time I felt they had done anything to, to necessarily stop us. We pretty much stopped ourselves. and. Uh, Leah played really well down the stretch when we needed him to. Executed the two-minute offense a couple of different times, got us in position to tie it, got us in position to win it with some big throws. And I think that's what we've come to expect, and our players in our program have a lot of confidence and faith in them. And back to Charlotte, we'll take two or three more. Coach, you've been talking about how proud you are of their ability to overcome adversity in this last game. When you look at the offense as a whole, I guess, what kind of sets this offense and this team apart from maybe other offenses you've had in the, in the past? And what makes you most proud about what they've been able to accomplish in just these three games? Yeah, it's so hard to compare the offenses, you know, through the years. You know, I think they each have their own unique characteristics. But I think what really shows up with this group is, one, you know, the growth of our offensive line. Uh, I talked about it earlier in the year that, you know, it's the one group I thought that made the biggest jump of all of our positions last year. Uh, we don't have the depth that we would need and that we're going to need, but we've been very fortunate that we've been able to maintain the same starting five. And, you know, with Emilio Moran and DJ Glaze both rotating in, we've given ourselves seven guys that we've been playing with. So I like the way they've kept our quarterback protected. I like the way that we've been able to establish the ability to run the football, to create balance. We all know that we've got a, a strong core in terms of our receivers. We feel strongly about our quarterback. 
and we feel like we've got three really good tailbacks that all can have contributed. So, you know, it's the team effort, but if there's anything I've been the most proud of and, and, and up until this past game was we hadn't turned it over and we hadn't had any penalties. And so to me, to be a good offense, it starts with not beating yourself first. Last weekend, we gave them a couple, you know, the touch, the, the, the red zone fumble uh, that we, we had with Fleet, you know, would have gave us a chance to go up and maybe have crushed the spirit there of uh, Illinois, but instead it created a momentum swing on their part where they drove it down and scored a touchdown to tie it. So um, to me, I've just been pleased that we've been playing clean football for the most part. And we got to get the fumbles obviously fixed this week uh, that we had last week because this Kent State group, uh, they've been really good at forcing turnovers and they're all over the ball. They got veteran players that strip the ball out, they get interceptions, they're very multiple what they do. So uh, we got to be really smart in taking care of the football.